Welcome everyone, I'm going to be teaching you all now about the lower brass instruments. So you've heard about the upper brass instruments, that's your trumpets and your French horns. I'm going to be talking to you about trombones, euphoniums and even a tuba. So let's get stuck in. What is it that makes them lower brass compared to a trumpet? They are lower because they are lower in pitch. But why are they lower in pitch? Well, a good rule of thumb to use across the board in music uh, and musical instruments is that the lower, um, uh, sorry, the, the larger a instrument is, then the lower it will sound. So if you pluck the big fat string at the bottom of a guitar, um, it will play a low E. Whereas if you pluck that thinner string at the very top, you're going to get a high E. So that, that proves that rule of thumb there. So trumpets and French horns, they're small and, uh, and, they're, and they're thin, and so they get that high sound. Well, I'll kick off with the trombone here. How long have you been playing the trombone? Why did you start learning it? Now, this is my main instrument. I've been playing this pretty much most days since I was nine. Um, so, yeah, not, not very long ago at all. Um, and... Um, I, uh, I originally started on the trumpet, but I just love the trombone so much and the sound that it could make and the versatility. It gets to play tunes, but it get, also gets to play bass lines as well. And so it gets to fulfill that role that the tuba does, which is pretty much you know similar to like a bass guitarist in a rock band or a double bass section in an orchestra. So I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what this instrument sounds like, first of all, and you'll see just how different that is to a trumpet or a French horn. Okay, we're, we're talking very different there, okay? So the trumpet, super high and stuff like that, but then the, that trombone noise, we, we're really sound, starting to sound like a bit of a big fat elephant. So if I was to demonstrate how I can go high as well, you can hear that. Okay, so up there we can play all the tunes as well. It's nowhere near as high as a trumpet or a French horn, but um, it means we get to have a bit of fun and be quite versatile in what we do. So um, here's a little example of a tune uh, that I love to play, one of my favorite tunes ever, originally by a, a singer, a vocalist, using, using their voice. Um, I, I love to play things that uh, originally are for voice on the trombone because I think that the trombone can really bring, bring to life that kind of human vocal quality. Um, that can uh, really be, you know, stir those emotions. So, see if you recognise this one. Yep, that was Summer of the Rainbow, originally from Wizard of Oz. Um, what a beautiful piece that is. But one thing you might notice is when I'm playing these tunes, this thing here is moving. Okay, this is called the slide. And this is the main difference with the trombone compared to basically any other of the brass instruments. The other brass instruments all use what we call valves. This is where the fingers move, the three fingers. Um, the euphonium has it, the tuba has it, the trombone doesn't. So the valves are redirecting air to use different tubes and uh, we're increasing or decreasing the size of the instrument and there we get that rule of thumb about large is lower and small is higher. So if we are to um, extend this slide, let me push this out here, okay, we're making the trombone longer or bigger, we're going to go lower. So if I hold a note, Okay, so that demonstrates that pitch thing there. So I, I fly about with my, my arm moving all over the place and, um, and that's how I explore the different notes on the trombone. So if I pop that back there on the wall and we'll talk a little bit about the euphonium. So the euphonium, it has its bell up here. We play it like this, it sits upright. Whereas a trumpet goes forwards, this sits upright. So I'm gonna move this microphone 
so that it goes up into the bell and we can get a nice sound up there and it actually uses the exact same mouthpiece that the trombone does so I pull it out of my trombone and I pop it in here being a low instrument does the euphonium only play bass notes similarly to the trombone it's actually quite versatile in in the way that it's used in the way that composers write for it it can be a bass line um, or it can provide the tune and stand at the front of an orchestra or brass band and um, yeah, take all the glory like a, like a trumpet player loves to do. So I'll give you a couple of examples of, of both of those. So we've got um, a bass line. Okay, so you can imagine the elephants plodding along in the Jungle Book or something like that. Uh, if we uh, explore the, the more tuneful side of the euphonium, um, I can give you an example of a piece I actually learned for the trumpet. So if any of you are already trumpet players, but you like the sound of lower brass or what that might, how that might feel to play, then it all transfers. It's the same valves. These, the valves all work in the same way. So this piece is a piece called Ragamuffin. <laughs> What's the difference between a euphonium and a tuba? They look the same. Okay, so if we were to make this euphonium like twice the size, three times the size, we would end up with a tuba. And if it's twice the size or three times the size, that means we end up with two or three times as low. So a tuba is massive. It takes so much air, so uh, so your, your lungs will grow. If you learn to play these instruments, your lungs will get bigger over time and um, you'll get very, very good at blowing out birthday candles. Um, but the tuba is, is the biggest of them all, really. And it sits there at the back of an orchestra uh, next to the trombones or it sits there next to the drum kit in the back of a band and, and provides that bassy bass line or in a jazz band. Um, it, sometimes it's a sousaphone, which is one you can kind of wear like a big snake. Um, but uh, yeah, the, those, those are the, the kind of the main kind of instruments there of the lower brass section. Um, and I'm just going to leave you with one final tune. As I said to you before, I do enjoy playing uh, tunes that are by singers I, I love to reinterpret those so um, I'm lucky enough in in bands that I play in to get to play tunes by singers that uh, you might be keen of uh, keen on such as uh, Dua Lipa, Billie Eilish, um, Ed Sheeran, um, Coldplay, Bastille so here's a tune by uh, Daft Punk that you might all recognize um, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening to this uh, and watching this video. And I hope to see you soon uh, in some brass concerts. Okay, take it away. Here we go.